Welcome Sim Horizon viewers, Rob Ainsco here, owner of Sim Horizon and software engineer. Today I'm going to go over a second part of my Silent Chiller series and uh, I'm going to cover uh, some of the more meaty bits of uh, the electronics and uh, how I'm using them to control the water pump, the case fans, um, also how to uh, control the uh, uh, vapor chiller over here. Um, let's go ahead and uh, go over some of the progression from last time and it's a quick overview. Um, the purpose of this particular project is silent chiller and what that means is um, building a, a vapor chiller based on several other components um, that is going to cool down at PC so depending on the heating requirements, this unit will um, cool down. A single one of these will cool down up to 450 watts worth. Um, as you can see, there's a blank space over here. Well, not so much so blank. <laughs> there's a lot of electronics in it, but um, this is that's all for testing. Um, there'll be a uh, option to add a second one of these over on the right side here, um, driven by the same pumps and um, it will add additional cooling. If uh, someone needs more than about 450 watts, they can go all the way up to 900 watts of cooling. Um, this case is where the silent bit comes from. Um, it may not be apparent right now, but this, is gonna, this will be an enclosure. Um, it's gonna actually be on wheels, and the enclosure will have a vent at the top. That's this placement of this fan here is to represent roughly where that vent will be and the purpose of that vent is to extract the hot air which the chillers will produce and extract it and through another ducting out to wherever is uh, desired to put the heat. Um, there's also another fan in here which will be sucking air in from the bottom. Again this will be on wheels and um, both of these fans are going to be controlled by this uh, Arduino over here and some coding I've done to uh, burn in a firmware for the Arduino. And um, the, in addition to the fan control, um, there's, there's gonna be a temperature sensor here. This is a temperature and humidity sensor. This sensor will um, control, there's gonna be two of these. One is gonna be internal to the case because I wanna know how hot it gets in here. So that'll regulate the speed of these fans again controlled through Arduino and my code and then there's going to be an external temperature sensor here um, this one is to measure the humidity outside of the case and the temperature outside of the case most importantly the humidity I will calculate the dew point and um, from those uh, readings and the dew point is where condensation will start um, that's why the temperature sensor needs to be external um, because uh, I want to read the temperature outside of the case, uh, sorry, and the humidity outside of the case and calculate dew point from there. And it's important to, to manage dew point because the last thing you want is condensation running along these lines. So uh, the Arduino, I've got that set up so it'll read both uh, temperature sensors and the humidity. And I've got some logic set up that will uh, uh, reduce the output from the vapor chiller over here based on the two dew point value and the temperature of the water. Um, this unit here, and I guess we'll put it back into the Arduino, and from there I use that value to calculate how to manage the difference between humidity and the water temperature, and then come up with a value I need to uh, operate the chiller or to turn the chiller off um, to prevent any condensation. Um, it's fully automated now, um, so it'll do everything uh, everything for you. Um, there's no chance of you running too cold. Um, it'll not let that happen, uh, thanks to the uh, some of the logic I've added to the Arduino over here. Um, just for reference, this Arduino uh, doesn't actually have a uh, digital uh, to analog converter. Um, it operates entirely on PWM, which is pulse width modulation. Um, so as a result of that, um, in order to control 
this voltage here, uh, which is zero to five, um, I needed to uh, uh, modify the PWM from the Arduino using basically over here, this wiring mess. Um, this is a, a 10K resistor and it's a 10 UF uh, capacitor to ground. And that way that'll uh, smooth that signal out so it could be effectively used as a zero to five uh, signal, uh, analog signal. So that's some of the things with the Arduino. Um, there's also a couple other things it can do. Um, it's monitoring uh, the pump. I can't know if you can see this here. It's monitoring both pumps uh, output. Um, and this has the, both these pumps have uh, PWM output on them. And I monitor both of those pumps output in here. And I can adjust the uh, speed of those pumps to whatever I need it to be specific to the particular environment that it's in. Um, typically, uh, I'm only gonna adjust the pump speed um, in situations where it starts getting really cold. Um, as fluid cools, it gets less viscous. Um, so you need more pump pressure to get that fluid through. So I'll take into account that uh, uh, temperature of the coolant and as the temperature drops too much, I'll start increasing pump output uh, to compensate, to keep the flow at a fairly consistent rate. Um, so uh, with that said, let's go ahead and get this fired up. Um, I've got over here, that's my Arduino code. Uh, it's very C-like and I upload this code to uh, um, the Arduino and get things working the way I want to get them working. And over here is uh, my digital meter, which is actually what we went through before is being operated from the other side. This is just a digital multimeter output. That's actually running from the back of this unit over here. Um, and then uh, finally, a couple of things I had to do which were um, it required a bit of a lot of uh, trial and error and data sampling is the sink the sink signal out of this um, thermal tape uh, TF2, which is a water and flow sensor. Um, I'm mean, sorry, a water a flow sensor and a temperature sensor. Um, this signal, I, I had no idea. There was no documentation on what was what, so I kind of um, had to do a lot of testing and figure out what. Uh, values were coming out of this uh, particular um, unit here to uh, then basically do a data plot in Excel here of my values that I, that I read um, from my digital multimeter um, and then come up with uh, run what they call a data out data analyst uh, uh, function on these to come up with the projected values in a formula and that goes same for the uh, uh, Arduino uh, uh, analog values will be over here, temperature values, and then same for uh, projected uh, output for the coolants, the vapor chiller. So I uh, calculated, uh, based on these data here, I calculated a formula for these, um, both of these, and then I use that formula over here in my code. Um, and then I basically run an upload, and it'll put the firmware into the Arduino over here. So with that said, let's go ahead and fire this thing up. Um, in the back here is the power on switch. The light is, just indicates there is power to it, but then you have to actually push the switch to turn it on. Uh, these are the outputs. Uh, put in a temporary, uh, uh, just a loop, just to, so I can run flow through something. Uh, this is a, a CPU water block that, this is a CPU water block that I haven't, uh, or an old one I used to use, don't need anymore. Uh, these are quick disconnects, so you can pop them in and off uh, quickly without uh, any issues. Um, so I can go like that. Notice I don't lose any water. There you go. Yeah. This makes it a lot easier to uh, connect uh, to the computer. So they basically just push in like that. There you are connected back up, no water loss. Okay, so, uh, all right, so let's go ahead and power this on.
Okay, so we've got our flow. We've got our pumps going. Um, our fans are going up here. They're, they're fairly at a low speed right now. Obviously, because there's no heat in the case. If there were a lot of heat in the case, these fans would be rotating faster. Again, it's all based on this temperature sensor over here. And that is going to be the external one. And I went over before. You can see the values here. The uh, internal one says 69.62, external is 67. Um, so this is a, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this little uh, heat gun I have on. It's set for 200 C. So we're gonna bring this up to temperature. And then we're gonna blow on this. Blow on the sensor here, which we're blowing heat on it. And we'll take a look over here. And hopefully we see our temperature. There we go. Temperature sensor is going to weigh up. 87, 94. So it's clearly uh, you know, operating independently. Turn this off. And uh, that will, if you notice here, the fans are suddenly cranked up in speed. They're running much higher than they were. That's because uh, the temperature internally has gone up to 101, or it thinks it's gone up to 101. So these are now operating at full speed. Uh, and the chiller has now kicked in, as you can tell by these fans here. That's the chiller. It's going to be a lot of heat coming out of that. And our uh, temperature and flow meter is now running. And that 59 degrees F is the coolant temperature. See it's dropping down a little bit. Now what we have over here is a, I was just checking the um, output of the uh, PWM from the water pumps, which is actually this line here. And that runs into the PWM lines over here. And this is just showing me the uh, uh, output from the pumps. You know, so I can see uh, what they're getting, making sure that's working correctly. And um, you know, go back over here, temperature slowly going down. Um, the way I've got this coded is um, I try to minimize the pump uh, or the compressor, the vapor chiller over here. I don't want it constantly running if possible. Uh, I want it running just enough to keep it at a, you know, a good temperature. So uh, with, that, with that said, um, you can see this unit is doing its job. And if we go back over here, we have, okay, so that's the actual voltage that is being sent to the coolants here. Um, I have uh, monitoring those lines with uh, the tied in over here, <laughs> along with all this jury rig wire. Um, yeah, I know it looks a little uh, crazy right now, but uh, once I get all the wiring uh, sorted out correctly, you know, these are, you won't see these uh, pin type wires, you won't see the breadboard, uh, you know, it'll be all nicely encapsulated into a nice cable, and it'll probably be in, a, in some type of case like that, or something else, and it'll be mounted up over here. And the temperature sensor here will probably be in another case. It will be mounted on top, most likely. Uh, it might be hard to visualize, uh, you know, what's going on here. Um, especially since there's no, it's not in a full case. But just keep in mind, this is going to be a full case. Um, and when it's uh, complete, there's going to be uh, sound deadening material in the entire case to keep it quiet and then it'll be enclosed and then it'll be a ducting so it should be operating extremely quietly um, so uh, that's, and this is the uh, cool lens has now actually turned itself off um, and it'll turn itself back on again again that's based on the particular temperature if it gets below dew point it will uh, want to uh, It'll shut itself off to make sure that it doesn't get too cold. These lines are pretty cold right now. I believe the dew point in here is around 
48, I think, so I'm 46 or 47, something like that, the actual dew point in the house. So I'm keeping it uh, um, some safety margin here. Um, and I'll cut it off before we actually get to the point where we're creating condensation. So if we go over here, um, I can go ahead and bring up what they call a serial monitor. And what this will do is it'll it'll show the output that I create from the code here that's actually been running in the Arduino. And if you wait a little bit here, there we go. So we get uh, a bit of an overlap here, but it's kind of uh, wide. But uh, you see you got humidity, um, internal humidity, which is coming from the internal temperature sensor over here at 46.9%. Uh, um, we got humidity external, which will be coming from this temperature sensor over here. Um, and that is at 56.6560%. Uh, then we have the coolant raw. Um, this is coolant data coming from the sink signal here from the thermal take TF2. And raw just means that's the actual value I get back from it. Um, and uh, the, uh, I then translate that value, like I said, by my spreadsheet here. Uh, I come up with a formula for um, uh, what values match. Oops, sorry, down here. <laughs> and uh, come up with a formula of, based on some data plots that I created here, uh, so I can calculate what uh, I need to do as far as adjusting uh, uh, pumps and fans and chillers. So, going back to this, we've got coolant temperature. Once again, I convert this raw data to temperature. And as you can see here, coolant temperature is showing 49.87. Uh, here I've got 51, that's a tad off, but it's pretty close. I might make some little tweaks and adjustments to that. Um, I see, it was, yeah, 50.15. Um, so it's about maybe 0 0.09 degrees off. Uh, that's pretty close. Uh, the dew point, uh, again, um, this is a calculated value. Int means is dew point internally. And then we have dew point externally. Again, these are calculated values. They should be pretty close because the case is open right now. But um, the dew point external is one that's gonna control the output of the chiller. And then we have um, the temperature internal uh, to the case. And again, that's coming from this particular temperature here. And then we have temperature external to the case, which is gonna be that one over there. Um, and the temperature internal is going to be used to control these fans over here. Their speed will increase and decrease based on how hot it gets inside the case. So that's just the uh, serial monitoring, which is how you uh, check values that you've coded into the Arduino. And all right, that's got that going. Let's go ahead and bring up my multi-monitor. Again, this is the voltage, it's 1.25, which is being sent to the chiller over here. Um, and the range is 0 to 5, so 1.25 is fairly low. Um, so it's not working too hard. Uh, it doesn't need to work too hard to uh, maintain this, uh, dew point, this coolant value. Again, I, I factor in a bit of safety factor here, so... If the dew point is 48 or 47, you know, I bump it up maybe three degrees, and, you know, just give us, make sure we don't get into a point where these lines get condensation on, because that would be bad. And the beauty of this entire setup is um, it can be completely fully programmed, so if I need to make adjustments to anyone that has one of these, I can easily do that. Um, it's simple to do. Just load it up. Uh, it's got a USB port on it. And plug into the USB port, and they can adjust the programming to make it fit, uh, you know, customer desires or you know whatever they want. Um, if they want something slightly different, I can do that too. Um, but the the primary purpose is this unit here is to um, 
make sure that everything's automated to minimize wear, to um, make sure that there's no possibility of condensation. Um, you know, you can basically turn it on and forget it and you'll, you'll be fine. Um, you won't need to do anything and we'll have the coolest subambient temperature you can get. Um, so this is a part of my second uh, video on this. I'm going to do another video later on uh, once I get all the wiring sorted out, um, which is, uh, I don't want to say the easy part, but uh, getting this to work, everything to work the way I want it to work is probably the most difficult part. Um, this is just what I more mundane work of just getting the wiring of the circuits soldered and put together and, and closed in the case. So uh, that's it for the part two of this uh, silent uh, chiller. And part three is probably where I'm going to have most of it assembled and I'm going to put the insulation in it so you can see all the sound deadening and how it operates. The full enclosure um, with the a venting duct up top and the fans sucking air in from the bottom um, making sure the case stays cool because um, this cool ants when you're putting a lot of load on it it will get um, you know it will crank up and it will get warm inside that case so it's important to keep that uh, working correctly um, so uh, that's it um, stay tuned and hopefully there'll be another video later on with uh, almost complete chiller